Hi guys, another session this time at night um, because, well, I love this shit and it keeps me really busy. Um, I feel that it's very important also to um, be on top of this right now because, um, yeah, we're, we're, I think we're going to get a great opportunity um, to get into the market. I've been working a lot on this chart and um, uh, this plan, investment plan of mine, and I, I think it's becoming really good. And I've simplified it to three scenarios. Um, uh, basically, I think I think the the, the big job here uh, as an investor is to balance your portfolio correctly. And when you're at an all-time high, as we were in January of 2018 at 830 billion market cap. I made the big mistake of still being 70% invested in crypto. I was 90%. I did sell off 20% towards fiat and raise my fiat from 10 to 30%, but that was not enough at all. Uh, I should have gone to a minority exposure, but because I started to follow the HODL strategy, I, asked, I had in the middle of 2017 bought uh, my favorite coins and, and had uh, Bitcoin Cash and, and Obyte at the time and had pledged to not sell them ever again. And as a result, I couldn't sell these positions and they were very big in my portfolio. And that was a big mistake. Um, similarly, I've made a mistake during the bear market. I had pledged to go to a majority exposure and I did that, but then I sold it off again. And, uh, and, and as a result, today I'm only at 48% exposure. But, I mean, I should have like invested up to 70% at minus 50% under valuation. And then today I would have 90% exposure. Of so, and that's what I really wanted to achieve during the bear market. Luckily, I'm ahead of things. And I do think that the bear market has not completed yet. And so I am just in time to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is doing it right. Very likely we're going to retest the bottom. That means that the breakout will very likely fail that we just saw happening because the volume is not high enough. This chart here by Crypto Medius that I also showed in the previous video is very good, uh, showing that the volume on this breakout uh, is very low compared to the breakout of the previous bear market. You have one breakout failed, another breakout failed, and then the real breakout that succeeded and prices stayed at a much higher level. Many people think we're there but the volume on a breakout is much higher. Like this volume is the same as the volume during the bull market. Huh? So this volume during this breakout is not at all the same as the volume during the bull market. It's like only half. And, and this was, for example, the case also on the first breakout here. You see the volume is only half. of the bull market. The second breakout here, the volume is only half of the bull market. It's not. So, 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 so that's, that's one um, indicator. But many others that I've also shown in a previous video, I will just quickly go over it. This uh, chart by Throwaway on Twitter is very good. I also showed in a previous video in summary. Um, this breakout has very, very different properties from the breakout in 2013, for example, or the breakout in 2011. The big difference is that here in this breakout, the RSI is on a very high level, huh? meaning it's overbought. We did see this also in this breakout here. It also reached overbought level. But 
the difference is well, for example on this first one the first breakout here in 2011 we did not see an overbought level but the difference here is yes it's also overbought in 2040 a uh, 15 at the end of 2015 the breakout with the high volume also reaches overbought levels in the RSI but for example the N NVT ratio uh, NVTS actually uh, is uh, not overbought on the breakout in 2015 at the end of 2015 in the start of the bull market uh, it's not overbought at all uh, sorry it's green it means it's a great buy huh? the NVT is an in important indicator sh showing whether um, um, the value of the network is high relative to the usage relative to the value that is transacted on the network if it's low that means it's cheaply priced if it's high means it's expensively priced huh? on the breakout in 2015 it was cheaply priced, which is also how it's supposed to be at the start of a bull market. The same in 2011. On the breakout, it was very cheaply priced. The amount of value transacted over the network is very high compared to the price of Bitcoin. Here, on this breakout, it is very expensive, Bitcoin. So, because of these reasons, I think that the breakout is very likely to fail, and other reasons too, like just general reasons that, well, um, <laughs> breakouts never succeed or very rarely succeed after a bear market on the first try. And usually, they need to be tried a couple of times. That's just how breakouts work usually. Huh? So um, that's another reason why I think it is very likely that the bottom will be tested. And in crypto, that means not that we go to the same bottom price, but that does mean it in, this, uh, in the stock market. Retesting bottom means that you actually go to the bottom again. But in crypto, it means retesting the bottom uh, well, that's a scenario like uh, the one we saw in uh, 2013, where, um, yes, uh, it looks from a distance that fiat prices are flat, but in reality, you don't reach the bottom price of the capitulation day, where you reached uh, here, in this case, $155, from 1250 to $155. Uh, you go back up, down, back up, down, but in each time, actually, here, for example, it only reached like 155, then it, the, the bottom was two, 220 or so dollars. And on the second failure of a, a breakout, you had a low of actually $200, a lower low here, but then the, the, the breakout came. So um, it means it's about 20, 30% higher. Uh, the fiat prices that you still see come back. Huh? So that's what it, what it means in crypto. and. I think we will very likely see something similar where we are going to test the bottom but it will be like 30 percent higher or so and what prices do you get then well these prices huh? you don't get 3,150 you don't get a lot bottom but you get 4,500 or so huh? uh, even 4,000 huh? and for bitcoin cash you don't get 75 dollars but do you do get 200 dollars back because now we're at 400 huh? For Ethereum, you don't see $80, but you do see $140. Now we're at $260. So these are very reasonable prices to be seen again. Also, minus 50% undervaluation is very likely to hit again. As I showed in previous video also, anytime you go into a bear market, you see undervaluation coming back. It was minus 50% in 2011. It came back during the sideways movement. Actually, it went minus 55% and it went to minus 60% uh, during the sideways movement. 
here we had the fiat bottom at $155, it was minus 40% undervaluation, but later it went to higher undervaluation during the sideways fiat movement, and then the sideways movement parallel to the trend line, you saw prices undervaluations of even higher, minus 40% the first time, then you had minus 60% and then minus 70% during the sideways movement, and then for a long time you were at minus 60%, so now we saw minus 50%, we're back up here to now minus 5% only. So we went back to fair valuation, but it's very likely that we will see minus 50% again during this bear market. And even higher, it's actually very likely we will see minus 60% again towards the end of the sideways movement. If we saw the bottom, if this is indeed the bottom, the 3050, then still it's very likely we'll see minus 50% compared to the trend line that's continually rising. Uh, but that undervaluation will be seen again, minus 60% is even likely. So that means that this is very likely to be seen again, minus 50% undervaluation. These prices are also very likely to be seen again while, while the bottom is tested. But even if we would have like, yeah, so, so this is just very likely to happen again. We just don't know the date, but that's not very important. You just put your buy orders here and they probably very likely going to get filled. And, and that's actually where I do want to do my first buy. So I'm changing my mind on that. On my yesterday's video, I said it is minus 35% and that meant was more like $270 I would buy Bitcoin cash back. I think it was $5,800 or so, yeah, we can just see it. This was what I was wanting to do yesterday, to buy back around 6000 and around uh, 300 Bitcoin cash. But I don't think this is smart because this is extremely likely to happen. Like this is way too likely to happen. It's not, it's not a steal it's giving your money away too easily because it's very, 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 very probable that we will see the scenario. So why pay these prices? If you can have a scenario that's very likely, not extremely likely, but it is very likely to hit, that's good enough huh? in my case, because I am already 48% exposed. Of course, if you are see, severely underexposed, and you really failed buying during the bear market, yeah, then of course, uh, 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 then you need to set these prices higher uh, uh, to, because you need a higher certainty to buy crypto. But in my case, I'm already 48% exposed. So, I mean, in case I miss, in case the bull market goes crazy and if there's only a very low chance and I do, uh, 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 and these prices don't get hit, huh? Yes, then I will be left behind, but half my portfolio is already invested in crypto, so I'll be fine. Huh? But I think it is very likely that we will see these prices again. And so that's where I plan to raise my exposure from 48 to 70%. But of course, when we reach these prices, I will not be exposed 48% because that's at current price of Bitcoin Cash 400 that I'm 48%. That will be cut in half when we reach this, so I will be only exposed like maybe 30% or so. And then I will raise it to 70%. And so I will double the amount of crypto that I have if we reach these prices. And I will also have succeeded in being invested for the majority of my portfolio during this bear market at very good prices. So, and I think it's very likely that's gonna happen. So. I feel really good about that. Uh, yeah. The next scenario is not very likely, but likely, I think that we will see a new bottom. I also explained that uh, in a previous video, but uh, or the video before, but in summary, why I think odds are very high that we will see a new bottom is because cycles become longer over time. So market cycles become longer over time. 
we've seen this in the past and so likely this will continue in the future and that means that um, it's unlikely that the bear market was only one year uh, if the cycle indeed becomes longer then the bear market is likely going to be longer than the previous bear market and the previous bear market was one year so this one will probably be one year and a half or so simply because we are indeed in this cycle at a much higher market cap than the previous cycle and well very likely these cycles become longer and longer due to the uh, market cap increases the, the bigger a market becomes the slower it moves that's logical huh? as the more capital that is needed and the more people that are needed to make the market move so since we are in much higher valuations today in a previous cycle this pattern will likely continue and so yeah likely the bear will be longer and the next bull will also take longer than the previous one also i think this chart is uh, important um so many people think that we've seen the bottom and 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 we're now in in the start of the bull market and you have many suckers that are in disbelief like me and many other bears that are in disbelief about the rally and 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 then uh, and and therefore they are on the wrong side and this is typically the characteristic of a bull market. Eh? If many of these trolls saying that uh, on my channel too, on my YouTube comments and my Twitter uh, tweets, but actually, like <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. The, the 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 rally we have today, the breakout we have today, is extremely bullish. And that's very, very weird at the start of a bull market. I think that we, we, we have not seen the depression phase um, because otherwise we would not have such a strong rally at the start of a bull market. As you can see on the chart, even after you have capitulation, you do have like typically ups and downs still before you reach depression you have some fake rallies that prove to be disappointing one disappoints two disappoints uh, and that's after people have had huge losses already and that's when you get depression we have not seen that we only saw the capitulation you could say huh, from six to three k that certainly had characteristics of a capitulation, yes. But people only reached the level of like, yeah, shock eh, or anger. But many are still in the market that are very easily um, bullish. Eh? Uh, and um, that just confirms to me that we haven't uh, gone through depression. Depression takes a long time also. It's a slow period. We have not seen that. We saw the masses just become bearish at 6,000. Like before that, most people believed we would hold 6,000 and most people were bullish. It was only, only when 6,000 finally broke that people became bearish. The, ma the majority became bearish and they were bearish for like, yeah, a couple of months. Um, but um, the moment it shot back above from 4,000 to 5,000 on the 1st of April, the majority was bullish again. And um, that's too soon. Also, I think this chart is very important in showing the volume during the capitulation, as I also mentioned in previous video, is not high enough not high enough at all compared to the bull market typically in a capitulation when you reach the bottom you see a very very big candle on the way down on the way down not on the rebound on the way down you see a massive candle a massive volume uh, and the volume reaches same levels as the first big drops during the bull market from the all-time highs you have major major sell-offs and they also have very high volume 
while the capitulation volume is of similar strength and uh, or similar amount but this was not the case at all because yes this is a big candle here but it does not reach the size of the candles on the first sell-offs huh? it's smaller but also it was not even made at the bottom it was made from when 6000 broke on the way to 3000 but it was actually from 6 to 4000 that you have this candle when the bottom actually reached it was a weird process where it went gradually down from 4000 to 3000 on low volume and when the bottom is reached we have a very low candle here around 3050 almost no volume so this is also another confirmation that likely not very likely huh? but likely we have not seen the bottom yet and so likely we will see a new bottom huh? and that's worth keeping money on the sidelines because it's likely to happen huh? not very likely but likely and that means i will raise my exposure well the way i come to these numbers i just have like a minimum and a maximum i want to go 60 percent when we reach when my safe margin was hit of minus 35 percent but yeah we're long past there uh, in the meantime we went to 50 percent in valuation but i made some mistakes i sold some off i'm underexposed now so today the question is when do i go back in i'm not planning to go back in to majority at minus 35 because it's too easily reached I'm gonna sell my skin expensive and try to take the opportunity that is very likely to happen and that's these prices but so i have a 60 percent exposure i want that minus 35 percent that's my minimum and my maximum is 90 percent then i want to reach at minus 80 percent under valuation but from that these numbers are deducted that means that if we reach minus 70 percent I want to be invested for 83 percent so if we reach a new bottom that will have to be at an undervaluation of minus 70 percent because only then we reach a new bottom and because the previous low was 105 billion then you reach 84 billion that's where i will set my price prices and that, that that's a bottom that's not much lower than what we've seen but it's a new low and it's more likely to happen than a deep bottom which i think is possible but not likely that's why i want to increase here to 80 percent 83 percent when we reach for bitcoin cash it will not be a new bottom it will be 100 dollars but for bitcoin it will be a new bottom so that's where i want to raise to 83 percent and if we reach a deep bottom but i think that's not likely just possible I want to increase it to 90%. Voila, that's the story, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And wish you all a good night's sleep.